Hey, it's Tim here. And in Tableau 2020.3, Tableau have added the capability to write to database. Now, you've always been able to connect to database for some time quite now. In fact, Tableau have been adding new connectors pretty much every month or so to Tableau Prep. But now we can finally write that data back to a database instead of having to publish it up to Tableau Server. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you the full range of features, but if you haven't watched it yet, I uploaded another video yesterday showing you how to create your own Postgres database on your laptop so that you can follow along with this particular guide. Now, that's meant to be used in, in, in cases where you just want to play around with a database on your laptop. You're not trying to do anything in a production level database. So go ahead and watch that video if you want to follow along. Otherwise, sit back, relax. I'm going to go through this in as much detail as I can. Check out the little chapters that I've got here in the, in the bottom of the window. Uh, and uh, yeah, let's get stuck in. So I'm here in Tableau Prep. You've always been able to connect to lots of databases here on the left-hand side. Um, you can see there's quite a long list here. I'm on Windows, so this list is a little bit longer than if you're on a Mac. Now, the key thing is we've always been able to connect to these databases, but we haven't been able to write to these databases. So for now, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to close this. And if you're gonna follow along, you can actually start by using one of the pre-built workflows that comes with Tableau Prep. I'm gonna choose the Superstore workflow here on the bottom left. Gonna go ahead and click that and now you'll see that it opens up my workflow. Okay, so we've got a nice canvas here and what I want to do is change one of these outputs to be a write to database output. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that output here and you'll notice when I do that, it gives me a preview. Uh, actually, because I haven't run this flow, when I clicked on that link, it basically ran a sample of the data through the entire workflow and it's showing me the result here. In this case, the, the data set is quite small, so this is actually all the data that comes through. Now, the subtle addition here is in 2020.3, if you go to this output drop down just here on the left and I click on that, you'll now see that we've got three options. Uh, Publish data source. This was a capability that was introduced in previous versions, but now you've also got a database table. So we're gonna go ahead and click on that and see what the options are. Now, the key thing here is when we do that, there's only certain databases that are currently supported. And that's basically these ones. SQL Server, MySQL, Postgres, Amazon Redshift, Snowflake, Oracle, and Teradata. Now, to be honest, these are the most commonly used relational databases. So it makes sense that these are some of the first databases for Tableau Prep to be connecting to because they all generally use the same sort of uh, setup in terms of how they work. They're all relational databases, so they just work in a very similar way. Yes, they have nuances, but um, uh, they, they generally behave in the same way. And Yesterday, you saw me set up a Postgres database. I'm gonna go ahead and click on Postgres. Now, it's gonna ask me for a few things. Now, my server is already running. I've got this open in another window. I'll show you that. So here's my uh, Postgres database. You can see it's not really doing much. Um, you can see that I've got a few bits of uh, information here on the left-hand side. And I have my Tableau Prep uh, table that I actually created yesterday in my demo. Let me head back to Tableau Prep. Now we're back in here. Now, the settings here are pretty simple. Uh, when you install this on your laptop, it's normally just localhost. Unless you call it something else or you set, up, set this up slightly differently, it helps if you can spell. So let's say localhost. The, uh, the database I'm connecting to in my setup is actually just called Postgres, okay? So let's just type that in. Uh, username and password. Now for this one, uh, I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, can I remember my username and password? If not, you will never know because I'll edit it out. So here we go. There you go. Who knows whether I got it right? Maybe I got it wrong, who knows? So here I am, I've connected to the database. Uh, there's localhost um, and it's all working now. Now the thing is I need to enter a table name. All I've done is connect to it, but I haven't actually specified where I'd like the table to be saved to. And what you'll notice is as soon as I connect to it on the left-hand side, you see that it actually gives me a readout of all the databases. So you can see here on the left, it's now read this list in. And at the bottom, you can see the same Tableau prep database that I showed you just a few seconds ago here on the left-hand side. Now, we're not actually going to write to that. We're gonna to write to a different one to show you some of the capabilities that it's got. So if I click down on this uh, selection here, it asks me to enter a table name, okay? And again, this list here is exactly the same as this list over here. Now, in this case, I'm gonna type in a new table name because I'm basically gonna argue that I don't want to write to any of these tables. So let's just call this new underscore table. Okay, and when I do that, Tableau Prep realizes that table doesn't exist and gives me this option here to create a new table. So let's go ahead and click on that. And then when we do that, now it's obviously, you know, 
understood, okay, this is a new table we're going to work with. I frustratingly called it new table, which doesn't help with this video. But now we get these options here where we can see the three different ways you can write to a database. So create the table, append to table, and replace data. Okay. And these work exactly as described. So create a table means write a new table, basically. It always creates a table every time you run this. Append to table will always add data to the end of the table. And if you think back to 2020.2, we actually got some capabilities for incremental refreshes. And one of the options there is the ability to append data to an existing extract. And so that actually ties in really nicely with this feature. And check out my video on that as well. And then the last option is just to replace the data. This is basically like taking the same table, emptying all that, and then putting new data into it, okay? So you can either create a table every time, add to a table, or replace the data in a table. So in this case, we're gonna uh, create a table, okay? It will give me a warning saying, look, you're about to do some interesting thing to your database, which is fine. Any existing table will be discarded, okay, if it finds this. So let's go ahead and create the table. And here we are, we're pretty much ready to go. So we've, we've got the uh, flow on the left-hand side, and then it shows us how this is gonna transition over to the database on the right-hand side, okay? And then when we hit run flow, Flow runs pretty quickly. Uh, again, it would do because again, I'm running this on my laptop. In fact, my desktop, it's it's quite capable and um, the data's not having to travel far and it's really only, what, 20 rows. So this is, this is really not uh, anything like a, a database you might experience uh, in an enterprise setup. Uh, but there we go, we're done. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go switch over to Postgres to make sure that this is there. Okay, so just go over to the Postgres. And what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna refresh um, this page so that we get um, get some new information coming through. Uh, and then we basically go down to uh, servers, uh, Postgres. And if I go to public, uh, if I look at tables, you'll see here that I've got my new table and you've got all the columns that came from that uh, particular prep flow. So that's pretty much the feature in a nutshell. It's always worth playing around with these capabilities uh, just to see what's what, what's going on. Um, if I now, uh, I've created a table in this particular instance. Now, if I go ahead and append to the table, this is a little bit dangerous because I'm gonna basically write the same rows to the database. So this is like a sure fast, ways of, sure fast way of creating a nightmare for yourself in a real database. And um, what you'd really want to do is put an ID to signal what time you're writing to the database so that you can go back and separate this data if you needed to. Think of it as like snapshots. Every time I write, I'm creating a snapshot. And if I give it a time, then I can actually signal which one of the snapshots I want to use. But if I don't give it any time or any detail, then I'm not gonna know which rows came in at what time. So if I just go ahead here and run the flow, then I've just created a nightmare for myself. And it's actually enabled to run this for me yeah? because the details aren't kind, of, aren't kind of sitting okay. So at least you get this sort of uh, warning, at least you get a little bit of a heads up. If I go ahead and say, write um, second table here, let's go ahead and click underscore, it's the second table, create a new table. And then I go ahead and try and hit append to table. Again, I get another error because it hasn't found the table. So that's uh, that's gonna cause us another issue. However, if I go ahead, create the table again, this will succeed. Then if I go back and append to the table again, we're gonna get that error, okay? Because it's not able to actually figure out which rows came in at what time. You really need some sort of, uh, uh, a key to tell you what data is being written when. Now, unfortunately, at the time of recording of this video, although Tableau 2020.3 is out, the Tableau prep documentation has not been released. So I'm sort of flying blind here in terms of figuring out what the exact behavior is uh, or what you should expect to see and what kind of errors you should expect to see because the documentation hasn't been released. But as and when that's released, check back on this video. I'll drop a link in the description and we'll be able to sort that out. Okay, that's pretty much it. Um, now that you're able to write to a database, I'd love to know what some of the things you're trying to do uh, with your Tableau prep flows. To be honest, this has felt like the feature that a lot of people were waiting for. Up until now, Tableau prep has kind of been lacking that pizzazz, that sort of punch. And you know, publishing data sources to Tableau server was sort of like a middle ground, 
But in, in, in a real enterprise context, you normally want to put your data in a database because then it's available to other systems and other uh, setups in your organizations that aren't necessarily running Tableau and they can all use that. But now we've got databases uh, and we've now got the ability to write to databases. This is hopefully going to be a great feature. Okay, thanks for watching. Um, thank you for being really patient through this slightly longer than usual video. Um, if you've liked the video, let me know. Uh, if you don't like the video, let me know in the comments below. Let me know what we can let me know what we can improve and we'll try and get to that soon.